Well, if you've heard me say it once, you've heard me say it a thousand times here on Oklahoma Gardening, and that is to read the label and follow the directions when you're using pesticides. Well, today we're going to have a little bit more reinforcement on that, and joining us is Jim Criswell, our pesticide coordinator. And Jim, that is absolutely a true statement, isn't it? It's, it's a very true statement. Uh, as you know, pesticides are just one part of uh, a pest control scheme, but reading the label is extremely important. But when we look at the print on the label, it's pretty uh, scary at times. Why don't you help us dissect the label and go over some of the key points in it? Okay, when you go to the store to buy a pesticide, Steve, one of the first things you ought to look at is, is uh, the trade name, and then we go to finding out what else is on the label. And as you can see here, uh, the trade name on these products can be like Dexol Scale and Dormant Spray, which is not real informative. The other one is a Bordeaux mixture, which if we're uh, any type of gardener, we are familiar with uh, Bordeaux as a fungicide. Okay. And we have another example over here where the trade names are almost identical. They are both an orthochlor uh, trade name. And if you don't read the rest of the label, you can really make big mistakes by using the product where you're not supposed to. So we shouldn't stop right there. I mean, no. all the fine print we need to, to read through. Definitely. You need to read through the fine print. And the next step is, okay, so you've located the pesticide counters, and you've located some of the pesticides. Is you look at, from the trade name, then you look at the chemical that's in there. And every product will list what chemicals are in there as far as the active ingredient. And this scale and dormant spray has mineral oil and calcium polysulfide as the active ingredients. Okay, so that's really the key to purchasing what, what we want. Now this applies to organics as well, is that correct? Oh, definitely. Uh, organics are pesticides, okay. and it, it definitely applies to organics or synthetics. Okay, so active ingredient is the next step. What, what are we going to look at next? The next is definitely the type of pesticide. What we're talking about there, Steve, is whether it kills insects, diseases, or weeds. And if you look at this uh, dormant scale, you'll find out uh, exactly how it is working. And if you go to the Bordeaux mixture, it helps us more because the label does say for fungus disease control. Okay and you want to make sure that you're buying a fungicide for disease control and an insecticide for insects. Okay. What about, uh, what, formulation? Is that next? Yes. There, uh, we have an example of label here that helps us quite a bit. Uh, this 7-5% dust tells us it's a dust, and it's going to have to be applied by a dust. Some of these others, you'll read through it, and it will tell you that they are either liquids or wettable powders, and they will be mixed with water. Okay, and a big mistake is people trying to mix dust with water. Is that correct? That's a that's a big mistake because it's like water in the world; they don't mix. Okay, so again, following the label and it gets you out of trouble many times. Now we see the EPA registration number on all of the labels. What really does that have to do with us? Okay. It basically tells you that one, it is a pesticide, and there's a lot of pesticides that we do not recognize. The other thing is EPA registration number is specific for that company's product. And when we get into some trouble, the EPA registration number will allow us to go directly to that label, pull it up, and look at it, and see what is in that product and where that product can or cannot be used. So if they needed to follow through on asking a question with the company, they'd want to give the registration number in most cases. That's correct. Now, one of the things I've noticed, Jim, in reading the labels is the consistency on the use directions. There's not a lot of consistency, is there? No. Uh, every label is approved by EPA. However, the consistency, as you said, is not there. And the reason for reading the label is to get the right product to be used in the right place. And if you look at these labels, they will do one or two things. They'll spell out specific information like corn. It can, this product can be used on corn. The other one will come down and down here and it says ornamentals. And ornamentals is a very broad label which allows you to use this product on basically any ornamental. Okay. But it's interchangeable sometimes as far as it may just say vegetables right. and, and vice versa, depending on the label. Now, if it says specifically cucumbers and another one says vegetables in general, can we get in trouble by using it 
in various sites where we're not supposed to. Correct. If it only says cucumbers, that's the only vegetable that that product can be used on. If it says uh, vegetables, it's any vegetable. Okay. What about days to harvest? I know some of them say so many days, some it doesn't say anything. Right. If it does not mention the number of days to harvest, you can actually harvest the day you apply the material. Okay. Of course you'd want to harvest before you make the application. Okay. What about um, any other things as far as use and, and t any troubles that we might get into on, on those particular things? Any other comments on that? Well, basically, it's, it's making sure you use the material where the label will allow you. The other thing is uh, don't make the assumption if it's outdoor, you can use it indoor. Okay. Because a lot of them are interchangeable and others aren't. And Correct. again, that goes back to our trade name probably, right. too. Well, once we're through, and I know a couple of weeks ago you told us to buy smaller quantities, to uh, uh, be careful in disposal. The labels are pretty specific in some cases about disposal, aren't yeah. they? Our, our disposal is use it up first according to label directions, and then some labels are very specific, and they basically tell you to how to dispose of it, wrap it and put it in the trash. Okay, but here's one that's very generic. Right, and even if it's generic, you still use it up according to the label directions or you wrap them up and put them in okay. the trash. All right then. Well, Jim, hopefully people will take this serious again and, and uh, read those labels before we purchase those types of products, again, both for synthetic or organic types. And uh, you'll keep us abreast, I'm sure, of any other changes that are coming along because things are changing every day. We appreciate you joining us. Thanks again, Jim.